So today we are going to introduce the architecture of the SAR ADC. Before we do that, do you have any questions on the quiz? So yes, you are supposed to do the superposition and seven in the equivalent circuits to show the process to get the credit. Uh, but if you are, are very familiar with this one, you know, you can just, uh, so what's the fastest way to calculate it? It's not required to list all the precise. It's just like a digital input. That's a DAC, right? Just think, imagine this is as an analog output. These are the three digital inputs. It's like a chip. Right? You have. Right? In a lot of places. So like uh, I just brought some ADCs. So the ADCs can be embedded into the microcontrollers. So for example, th th this this guy. Ten dollars, you can buy three of these boards. Crazy. And Arduinos, right? So the Arduinos have, this is a CPU, that's the only brain on this board, but all the other ones are peripheral circuit components. So that's the USB to serial converter, that's a crystal oscillator, and that's something I don't know, and that's the, all the big caps, and headers, and that's a CPU, so that's it has, the CPU has all the peripherals, has all the other communication protocols embedded into the chip. And I think the cost is really low, somewhere around like less than one dollar you can buy a chip, like this. And you can see the pins, analog in, what does that mean? You have six analog ins, labeled as 0, A0, A1, A2, and to A5. So these pins are shorted to some of the pins on the CPU, on the, on the microcontroller chip, right? And it's not a really more than microcontroller. It has, so this guy uh, is manufactured under a 350 nanometer technology. Huge. The one in your Apple phone, your smart, your uh, Samsung phone is probably you know, somewhere around 10 to 12 nanometer technology. So they are not even close. It's not the same generation. That's why you cannot put this guy into a phone. It's huge. Okay. So this means the size of the endmost transistor, so the lens, the minimum lens you can fabricate. For this pr fabrication process, the minimum length of every single transistor will be 350 nanometer. But for this one, it's going to be 10 to 12. And you can see all these analog inputs. So these are shorted to the pins to the chip, the corresponding pins to the chip. And they are named as analog in because they are connected to the ADCs inside this microcontroller. So recently, so all the modern uh, microcontrollers, they are not just simply just a CPU. It has all these ADCs, like peripherals, PWM, pulse width mod um, modification, and uh, I2C spy serial. You can see the TXRX here. That's another logic, uh, digital block. Even though it's only one dollar, but it's very complicated. It probably pays an engineer, a group of engineer, for example, ten people on the team, and everyone is paid at like at least one hundred fifty k a year, right? But it's being sold for one dollar. The reason is they are selling a billion a year, a billion of the chips a year, for example, right? That's why they are making profit out of it. So this is one of my controllers that has the ADCs inside. So the ADC on the Arduinos are 10 bit ADCs, and they are SAR ADCs. So you can 
find out actually the SAR DC is very still very popular on the market right now. The only uh, downside is it's based on this 350 nanometer technology, so it's cannot run very fast. So it's just a basic ADC. And if you want to buy some higher, uh, better ADC, you can buy an integrated circuit chip like this one. So these are not CPUs, even though they looks like the they have the similar package, the deep package. You can definitely find out the surface mount versions. But um, there are definitely better ones from Microchip, the company. And the company, uh, Microchip company uh, acquired Atmel a couple of years ago. So Atmel was a company that invented the Arduino boards, Arduino chips like these ones. But, you know, according to their uh, revenue or something like microchips way larger than that so they just acquired that company so now all the Arduino uh, boards and chips are um, being polished under the engineers the teams in microchips um, so the ADCs these ones have so many pins so that means they they have more than one channel analog channels and you can connect multiple analog signals and digitize them and you can schedule the output so the output can be any other digital protocols so they won't be a parallel output so it's usually serial so they are not occupying a lot of uh, uh, pins on your microcontrollers so when you have an ADC like that you can definitely directly connect any analog inputs to the chip And the output will be usually, usually, if it's called I2C, you're going to learn this in uh, 350 next uh, spring. And there will be only two lines, right? There are many pins, but there will be only two lines. One is called SDA, one is called SCL. So SCL means clock, and SDA means data, serial data, serial clock. So only two lines, and you want to connect the output of the ADC a microcontroller like Arduino chip like that so you can directly receive digital signal from this ADC all right if you're only using this Arduino you don't have to use this ADC because it has ADC here and okay, you have all these analog pins analog inputs you can directly connect the analog inputs into this guy for example the, the fir very first uh, uh, example you can run is something like this. Oh. It's a potential meter, and you can connect. Get another resistor, for example, and here's a VL. So you can directly just use a potential meter on the breadboard and just twist it so you can change the analog output. So you're getting a, a different you can get a, a varying analog output. So that one can be digitized by the ADC on the Arduino board or by this guy, either way. So there are many other microcontrollers available on the market. For example, these ESPs, which are very popular right now because they are able to do anything the Arduino can do, but also send everything wirelessly to somewhere else. So you can see this is a PCB antenna and Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, all these uh, things you can do. You can connect your microcontroller with all the other devices, Internet of Things, right? IoT devices. And I'm a big fan of using ESP32 boards because they are super popular, super powerful, and modern compared to these ones are like 350 nanometer. But ESPs. So the CPUs inside, I think they are around 50 nanometer or something, like 65 or 50. So way better, or even smaller. I just probably I don't know um, because they are changing their generations. So right now it can be 22 nanometers. It's very significant. Um, so we used that ESP32 boards uh, for some of the uh, projects we had in the lab. For example, this one, 
we customized the PCB, all, everything on the PCB by ourselves. And you're going to run through all the experiments in uh, 351. Next spring, so we're going to fabricate this PCB next spring. So that's the ESP module you can buy. And the power supplies from the LiPo battery supplying 3.7 volts. No. Yeah, 3.7 volts. And this is a little tiny voltage regulator, regulates that 3.7 into 3.3 volts. And you practice on how to solder this little thing on the board. It's very challenging if you are the first time for you guys to solder it. You could even see the pins. You have to use a blower, hot air blower. And the caps to stabilize the voltage uh, supply to the board. And that's the accelerometer. So that's a sensor. It's not a USB to serial converter. Since we are not going to program this guy directly from this board, it's not programmable. You have to use a you, you have to use this guy to program it because we don't have this chip available. It's taking space. We only we have to reduce the space um, for the board to embed into the horseshoes. This is detecting the uh, laminates of the horses, so I have to be embedded into the shoes. And that's the accelerometer and gyroscope. And <laughs> gyroscope, accelerometer, and all the sensors, three channels, are being embedded into this little thing. It's crazy. And so it's called the MAMS. MAMS. MAMS inside, and in addition to MAMS, it's micro-mechanical electrical devices, micro uh, so MIMES, so MIMES are uh, all these little micro sensors, uh, mechanical sensors actually, mechanical structure being fabricated on silicon. So if you grab a piece of silicon, you think it's fragile, you can easily break it. But whenever all the silicon are being fabricated in the micro level, they, they are showing different uh, properties, physical properties, mechanical properties. So you cannot easily break them when they are tiny, you couldn't even grab them since they are in micro nano level. And all these silicon wires and capacitors are actually floating in the MAMS chip. And whenever it's shaking, the silicon wires are actually moving around on the just above the surface of the uh, silicon. So they can change the capacitance between the two wires, uh, which will be converted into a voltage to indicate the acceleration or angle change. And it's called the MAMS. If you go to graduate school, it's a very big area of research and getting a lot of funding from a lot of places. And your phone has a MAMS chip as well. It can, can sense the acceleration. Sometimes if you rotate it, it changes the angle, it's going to rotate the screen. It's all MAMS, about MAMS. But this MAMS is special, even though it's only $4, but it has all these sensors inside, but also the output signal is not voltage. You don't have to process the voltage by yourself. It's directly telling you what are the accelerations by digital signals. So you, you just need to interface that thing with a microcontroller like this, or a microcontroller like this. So that's why we have this chip on the top. So this guy is directly telling this guy, the acceleration right now is 1G. 2G, 2.5G, things like that, in the form of digital signal, like 0001, it's going to be 1G, right? Things like that. So that's why we have to ADC, have to do ADCs, because we don't want a, the customer to handle the analog signals and process and convert and calibrate it. So just tell me, what are they in the digital form? Done. And because they are digital, they are either low or high, so there's no intermediate signals. See, there's so it's more um, resilient to noises. If, if, so, for example, if it's, there's a little noise, okay, and trying to reduce this guy from five volts to like four point eight volts, it's still a logic one. You are not treating this guy as zero. You have so much room to tolerate the noise. But if you have an analog signal, it's gonna happen. Five volts, right behind, right below it is 4.9 volts. If there's a little noise, it's gonna reduce that five volts to 4.9 and you don't know what the actual voltage is. 
But for digital, it's either five, either one or zero. I just need the, that combination. If you need a five, it's gonna be just one zero one, right? It's always one zero one. So that's why the digital TVs are clearer compared to the very old analog TVs, right? They're high quality, the monitors as well, because it's so definitive. It's like one is one, zero is zero. You just need a combination to make up that number. And same for the sensors. We just need a digital signal interface with the file controllers and so we can read it out. So that's the fundamental mechanism of pretty much 90% of the sensors and my controllers and how that works in any digital system or circuit systems. If you look at these projectors and pretty much everything you can, you can see, they, they all work in the same way. That's the one of the most important invention in, in on this planet in the past uh, like 30 years. My controllers, silicon, CPUs, sensors, ADCs, all these kind of things. It's, so this, this this world, all the, all the electronics around you, probably they work in some of the similar ways. Have to digitize it. Have to display them in a digital form. The computer cannot understand analog voltage. The USB, the USB, you connect, connect everything to the USB. The USB is it's called universal serial bus. It's all digital signals. If you hook an analog signal to the USB, it's not able to under, understand it. It can only follow that protocol under the clock sequence to transmit one zeros to the computer. And also, because we have digital signals, that's why we can store data onto the, onto the drives, into the computer, into the memory. How can I store analog signal? How, the, how can I store analog voltage somewhere? Huh? Potential energy, yeah. but you cannot store a large amount of data. You can you cannot even store them anywhere in in the computer. Analog voltage, no. You can you can never store anything in the analog form. You have to digitize it, so you get one zeros, because the transistors, the memories are all built um, under the uh, digital signal uh, mechanism. So they have to store one or zeros. They cannot store anything, intermediate values, higher or lower, no, it's logic. So starting from voltage regulator, right, all these kind of things, converting five volts. So the USB, one quick question, right? So what's the voltage of USB? Hmm? It's always five. Always, ever, keep in mind. It's a standard protocol, it's a standard port. So whenever you got, you got USB, keep in mind, five volts, always. Even though for this board, even though it's a micro USB, also five volts, keep in mind, always. If it's USB, five volts. So five volts here for the USB, even though it's a micro USB, it doesn't matter, it's just a smaller uh, port. It's still the same wires, different arrangement, but you know, no, no, no significant differences. But this CPU can only handle certain servos. Anything you know above three point eight probably will will blow it up, right? So five volts is fine because you you just have to regulate it. So on this board, you have enough enough experience with this this kind of things in uh, three fifty one. That's awesome class. I mean, since you have to build everything from scratch, you understand like starting from the power supply, what, whenever you are trying to design a system, starting from the power supply, why is that? Power consumption, and also what you need on the board, right? If, for example, this this design, it's, a, it's from the company who, who founded our lab, to make this happen. Uh, so the requirements are, you need to design the wireless sensor in the whole horse shoes. That's it. <laughs> Tell me more, like, no, you just do it, right? So then I started designing this system. And so I need a high performance CPU. That's why I think about this ESP32. 
pretty much the best one and compared to the cost and everything is best on the market. And also directly has this RF stuff on the PCB. You can directly send the signal out without the external antenna. So directly communicating with the PCB antenna. And it's not huge. It's not small, but not huge. Um, it's just less than $10. It's, you cannot complain too much. And it's 3.3 volts. It's consuming 200 millivolts, uh, milli, milliamps, 200 milliamps, for example, 200 milliamps, 0.3 volts. So you know the power, you got the power. So starting from there, starting from the power consumption of the chip, you're gonna think about the power supply. What's the battery you wanna use? And because of the size of the shoes, you have to use a small, tiny, a very small LiPo battery. But whenever the battery is small, the voltage is low. So the uh, standard LiPo battery is 3.7 volts. And this guy needs 3.3 volts. You don't have uh, that much wiggling room because whenever you regulate the voltage to 3.3 volts, whatever this chip needs, it's losing a lot of voltages. So you have to have a very high, high performance voltage regulator, which is not losing that much. You know, for 0.7 to 0.3, only 0.4 volts. Has to be a really good design. It's difficult to find this kind of stuff. Not really easy. So I did a search, you know, you know, for, for a couple of many hours, probably one, two days, I forgot. So Texas Instruments had, had, has one design. Um, this little guy here, it's called only losing like 0.3 volts or something. So that's why I can stabilize that 0 0.7 volts from the little tiny level battery to 0 0.3 volts to support this guy. And it works. So starting from the power supply, right? Always. So you want to design the power supply, design the PCB pads for this regulator. And, you know, every component on the board is happy. Here's the regulator. Mm, yes, even though, for example, the 5 volts, the, these, these 350 nanometer technologies are 5 volts devices. So you can directly hook a 5 volts logic to it without burning it. And you are thinking like, hey, it's 5 volts, uh, USB is 5 volts as well. So what about like I directly supply the 5 volts to this chip? It's not going to burn it. It's just not good. It's not a good pra practice. You always need a regulator. Um, yeah, for safety, you to avoid the noises, spikes of the power supply, sometimes you hook it up, it's, there will be a spike, it's going to burn the chip. Sometimes the, the spike can go to up to like 20 volts. So you, it can be a regulator, it can be some ESD protection uh, devices, can be some uh, really uh, large caps like these ones, uh, performs like... Uh, low pass filters can filter out these high spikes, high frequency spikes to stabilize the voltages to a nice 5 volts DC supply. Right. And the place you can buy these accelerometer sensors and we, are, we have been using this sensor in many classes, in many projects, especially in this class, and also in C432, uh, robotics tool. Uh, but this is very popular accelerometer or gyroscope. It's the same chip. You can see this guy. It's from here. So that's a PCB board you can buy. But that's in the middle, the, the IC chip, the sensor. The thing is, whenever you are designing a system for yourself, for your purpose, you cannot you can compare. Like, it's, it's impossible. You want to use this one for your system. It's too big has all the other st stuff on the board. So what you want to do is you want to look at their PCB design, just to grab whatever are required for your system and uh, place them on the board without using everything on the, on the PCB. So you can mini miniaturize the dimension of the board. Do you have ADC? Does it have ADC in this chip? What is this? 
accelerometer, right? Does it have ADCs? Why? But how do we get digital signals? You need a, sometimes more than one, multiple ADCs. Because the voltage changes. So keep in mind, still keep in mind, you know, this. if you haven't worked with uh, all different projects, you probably don't have that, that kind of model in your mind. I mean, I have been keep saying all the more, modern sensors are either converting the analog signal from the environment to a current or to a voltage, right? Although these are, for example, the MAMs have all the silicon wires. When you are moving, shaking the sensor, it's changing the distance between the silicon wires. So it's changing the capacitance between the silicon wires, right? The capacitance is still, is a, for example, that's the analog signal from the environment. And the capacitance has to be converted into voltage changes or, or current changes. And then digitize that current or voltage change into one and zeros and output that digital signal to the pins. So you can interface the pins with the map controller. That's how these sensors work. Everywhere, it's the same mechanism everywhere. And when you are dealing with a project, you have to find out what are these analog environment um, signals, it can be temperature, acceleration, anything. And so you can find out the correct sensors to interface with these ones. And when you are finding, trying to look for these sensors, the best, the best sensors you want, you want to use are the ones have ADCs on the chip. So you can directly connect everything to an Arduino chip or to a ESP32 without anything else. Just look at this one. The, the, the reason we can make it small because it, it's directly in, uh, communicating with the CPU using one zeros. No calibration, nothing, just directly getting the data. Is that clear? So for this one, just imagine that. So I just showed you the ADC chip. There are also DAC chips available. You can buy them. So DAC chips, you just think about this as a package. These are the deep pins, deep. And if this is the chip, whatever inside are just black box and one, two, three input pins and one output pins and one output pin, uh, output pin. So for this combination, it's actually just providing a 101 input for the DAC chip. Right? So if you're just calculating VL without showing the process, then what's going to happen is you, what, what is 101? Five. So five times what? Or five over what times what? Two to the what? Times what? What's VREF? What's the full range? Five. So, what is it? Done. Any questions? Whenever it's not required. Yeah. Yeah, you want to show the equivalent circuits. Mm -hmm. Since I think I mentioned that uh, use these ones, and also I mentioned that before the quiz, uh, I have to show the process to get a credit, right? So, but I, I won't ask you to do this all the time. Uh, so maybe the second time and then the third time, we'll just let you calculate it. Just eyeball it and tell me what's the output. All right. So now we know that the Arduino boards, Arduino chips have ADCs inside and they are sorry DCs. 
and there are 350 nanometer technologies. And the one we are trying to design in my senior SAM team is 180 nanometer technology from TSMT. It's even better than the Arduinos. But it's 8 bit, not 10 bits. So um, maybe the performance there is better, but we will improve it in the future. The architecture of the SAR ADC. SAR means a successive approximation register ADC analog to digital converter. <clears throat> it's very popular architecture of the ADC. So starts from a sample and hole circuit. So analog signal comes in, and then the comparator, the control circuit for timing. And then the SAR block. <clears throat> and DAC, feed it back to the to the comparator. So that's the output. Four bits. And uh, that's B3, B2, B1, B0. Remember, comparator, it's an open loop configuration. So the open loop gain is usually infinite. So whenever there's a little difference between these two terminals, it's going to trigger the output to be either VDD or zero. Remember that? If you forgot it, then just remember it now. Memorize it, right? It's amplifying. Here's VP, here's VM. So the output here, we just call it coamp or comp, comp, uh, the compiler's output, comp. So comp equals to the open loop gain times VP minus VM. And open loop gain is huge. AOL, open loop gain, huge, millions. So even whenever there's a little tiny difference, for example, VP is a little bit higher than VM, it's going to saturate the result because you have a finite VDD. For example, it's 5 volts. So it's going to saturate to 5 volts. So if VP is a little bit smaller than VM, so you are getting a little, very tiny uh, negative voltage, negative value here, but times millions, a huge negative value, but you don't have that negative value here, negative voltage here, so it's going to saturate zero. So uh, whatever this device is doing is comparing these two inputs. So it's called comparator, it's comparing whenever, like if this is larger than one, if this is smaller than zero, right? So if the DAC's reference voltage is 10 volts, for example, it's 10 volts, not five volts. <clears throat> And I'm getting a 5.2 uh, volts as the input and you know, voltage at some point, at some moment, at a time point, right? Let's see. Yeah, let's use 5.2 5, uh, 5 volts for now. Just use 5.2 5 volts. So here's 10 volts, 5.2 is here, just at that moment. And you want to get the conversion done because before it moves to like 5.4 volts, you want to get it done. So the, all the conversion process happens during that time frame. 
whenever it's holding that 5.2 volts. However, the input is a continuous sine wave, so it is not able to hold it. It's continuous signal, it's keep changing, it's analog signal. Who knows what the next value is, right? So it cannot, it cannot hold it. That's why you need the sample and hold. You got this, this one, whenever it reaches 5.2, it sample it and hold it. So what's gonna happen here as the output here is you are getting a discrete signal. Sound wave, but it's not continuous. The reason it needs a star is because if this is a 5.2 volts, it needs to hold it for a little moment before it changes. That's why you need a sample and hold. And this signal is called discrete signal. It's not an analog signal, it's not a digital signal, it's called discrete signal. Okay. Just all different uh, stars. So is this voltage analog or digital? Analog. What about this one? Still analog, it's just flat. Compared to these little dots, it has more dots to form that line. It's just staying there. Okay. So that's why you 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 got the time to convert that voltage. If it's not changing, if this is keep changing, then this guy cannot do the job. It has to hold there. Just need some time to convert it. All these circuits cannot be done, you know within a specific time frame, or longer than that time frame. <clears throat> 5.2 volts, and it's being sampled and held, so the voltage here at that moment is 5.2 volts. Right? Just one line, just one line, which means it's, it's an analog voltage, it's not digital. Just one wire. Right? It's gonna be a flat DC voltage during that time frame. And the SAR logic, you can design it to output a com digital combination as 1000 at the very beginning. So 1000 being converted back to this point by the DAC, like R2R ladder, for example. So you know how to do it, right? You got an R2 ladder, you got one zero zero zero. What's the output voltage if the 10 volts, if 10 volts is the VRAP, VDD? So one zero 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 over what? Two to the force equals to what times what? 10 volts. So what is this? A thousand? Eight? No, <laughs> it's eight, right? So eight over what? <laughs> never mind, never mind. Huh? Five volts. Five volts. So at the very beginning, it's getting a five volts here. Is there a control circuit for the DAC? I mean, if I feed, if I feed a 1000 to here, am I getting five volts instantly or I have a switch to control it? Do I need to wait? No, you don't have to wait. Whenever you give that digital signal, boom, five volts, right? You don't have a switch. You gotta have a gate, like open it, close it like that. No control. Important, right? Hey, no control. You have to be aware of that. So no control. Whenever this this digital combination appears here, boom, five volts. So five volts is being fed back to this inverting terminal. So what's the voltage being held here right now? Five point two. What's the voltage here now? Five. What's the output here? 10, or it's a logic one. 
right? So you need to design the circuit for the SAR block to implement something like this. I start the digital combination here with 1000 and it's 5 volts. And after it compares, the comparator's output becomes 1. And now what I want to do is I want to plug, I want to plug this one into this original combination. I want to plug it here. So this will be shifted out because I don't have the fifth bit. So this one becomes 1100. Zero, zero. And what is that voltage now? Twelve. Yeah, so twelve over sixteen times ten. <clears throat> so seven point five volts. All right. And next, so this is designed to do this job, right? You're probably asking why you can plug in this one here. This guy can do it. I'm going to show you how what's the architecture inside. But now let's just remember the or understand the algorithm of SAR. What's the algorithm of SAR? That's the algorithm here. So next, I got 7.5 volts here. Compared with what? What? Compared to what? 5.2 because it's being held there until I get the conversion done. So what's comp? Yep. And now I want to plug in that zero where? To where? Right behind this one. So I'm getting one zero. One zero. So this is this number is still being shifted right to the right direction. So I'm, another zero is being shifted out. So what is this guy? Um, so this is 10, right? 10 over 16 times 10. So 100 over 16. Six point two five. Hmm? Because seven point five compared to five point two. And according to this equation. It's, you are getting a negative number here, times again. So it's saturating the output. So this is uh, 6.25 volts. And now you're getting 6.25 volts. What's next? Comparator equals to what? Help. Yeah, why? Negative and saturate the output. The lowest is ground. That's why it's boom. So now you want to plug in that zero behind that zero. So you are getting one zero zero, and this one zero is a black one zero here is still being shifted rightwards, right? So it's becoming one because the other zero is being shifted out. You only have four bits. You have nowhere to store it. So what is this? 9 over 16 times 10, 90 over, oh, I have it, so it's 90 over 16, 5.625, so 5.625 again, com equals to what? Oh, sorry. Comp equals to zero. Plugging what to where? Plugging zero to here. Which is five volts. It's the closest one to five point two. That's how you convert it into five, into its uh, analog voltage. That's a SAR algorithm. 
So next step is just to design the circuit to implement this algorithm, right? But you have to understand what's going on so you can tell. Yeah. What? Yes. Where? Why? Yeah, one zero 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 over over uh, two to the fourth times ten is five volts. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so there are multiple possibilities for the ADC's output and let's draw all the possibilities in one chart. <clears throat> Starting with what? Digital signal. Starting with wait, where? Starting from where? Like 4 bit ADC. If we call this point to be V in, this is V in, and this one as VDC. That's the input voltage. That's the DC voltage converted by the DAC. Then if V in less than VDC, what's the next uh, digital value of the DAC? V in is smaller. So the non-inverting pin is smaller. Zero. Plugging zeros where? To the front. So after that, if V in, so let's just imagine, uh, assume that on the top is V in less than VDC, the bottom line is V in larger than VDC. So what's the number here next? What's the number here if V in is less than VDC? Again, after this number, still less. Is that correct? How that, how that works? Since you have a comp to be zero, and you're plugging that comp to here, and shift the other ones to the right. So it's gonna be zero, zero, one, zero. And the, the, the one here will be, so when V in is larger than VDC, So these are the remaining digits. What's next? Here. Here. So that's the remaining bit. So what is this one? Is it this one? Yeah, so you are plugging in the comp results to here. And the comp results for the top one will be zero. So that's why it's zero one zero one. And for the following one will be zero one one one. After the, yes, here, 
you want to shift this remaining one to the right, so it's going to disappear. So what's the final result? Here. So this guy is shifted out, and you just add another one to it. What about this guy? Any questions so far? Uh, I have another question for the same one. Mm -hmm. Zero one one zero. Can you go to the bottom? Can you explain that again? Zero one one zero. Where? Here? Yeah. Oh yeah. So from here to here, you you got two bits here being shifted to the right. So this zero will disappear, will be shifted out. So only one left, and you plug in a one here in the middle. So it becomes zero one one one. This one will be shifted to the right. You want to plug in a what? <clears throat> Done for the top part. So starting from here, if V in larger than VDC, the number here will be at one one zero zero because these guys are being shifted to the right. You plug in one here. <laughs> So on the top, the top half means V in is smaller than VDC, so you want to plug in a zero in there. And you want to shift everything to the right and plug in a zero to here. So it becomes here plugging a one. Shift plugging zero. Shift plugging one. Shift. Shift, plugging zero. One one zero one to one one zero one. Yeah. So you shift this guy to the right, so it's gone, and you plug in a one here. Yes. So these are all the quantized numbers possible for that four bit DAC. The output of the DAC, right? Because you have a DAC here. Oh, no, no, the input of the DAC is the output of the SAR. <clears throat> if you count, these are all the possible numbers starting from zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen.
The alpha comparator or We can try it. If you use six point something volts instead of five point two, you'll get something very similar to six point something. You can run it yourself. Try it. Yeah, just run the, run through this process. So keep in mind inside EC, if you have a four bit, you need a four plus one states to complete the conversion. You can see one, two, three, four, five. Always. So whenever you are doing that by yourself after the class, if you assume this is 6.5, fine. Just run through it, and you can tell me what the final conversion is after the fifth conversion. Yeah. I can guarantee that it's going to be very close to it. Or the best this ADC can do is only 4-bit. If you have a higher resolution, it'll take a lot of papers to run through the process, but you'll get a better value, closer value to that input. Okay.